Just look at this mess. Does your craft room look like this? I can gladly say it doesn't look like this anymore. I just spent a whole week cleaning and reorganizing. So now I can happily take you on a craft room tour before it gets messy again. In this video, I'll show you the basic layout and how I store things. I'm Veronica and this is Timeless Treasures. Come on in and enjoy this walkthrough of my craft space. So this is just the branding that I use at my craft fairs and behind it is where I keep all my books that I use in my journals, where I tear out old book pages from and at the very top you'll see those are my really really vintage books. Um, I'm really careful with them because they are just beautiful. Then next to it is where I keep my finished books and journals and explosion boxes. And over here are just some empty pretty boxes that I can use in any of my projects. So when you finally reach the top of all these stairs, this is what you see. This is the whole space, just a quick overview. And then I'll show you each section and how I made the space functional for me. Starting over here, this is my cutting station. So I've got everything cutting related on here. I've got my cutting rulers, my cutting mat, my knives. Everything is just here and accessible. And I've also got my big shot die cutting machine over here. I do sometimes transition between the cutting station and my glass table if I have bigger projects to cut. And on these shelves is where I keep all my paints and paint related products. So let's take a quick look at what's inside these drawers. In the top drawer is where I keep all my kind of finished items, so it's little tags and pockets and things like that. And on this side I've got envelopes and circles which I've already punched and page tabs and more envelopes. In this next drawer is where I keep all my wooden embellishments on this side. There's some feathers as well and some metal rings and key rings at the back. And on this side, yeah, I've got all my charms, which I use on paper clips and dangles. So I've got them sorted in these containers. They are sorted into butterflies, keys, clocks, and then some other categories, which I have less of. And then I keep all types of broken jewelry here at the bottom at the back. And here are all my jump rings and I've got some other bigger pieces of jewellery and embellishments over here. This bottom drawer has got all my beads and I keep my most loved and most used ones in a little container. Um, there's actually two containers and below there's even more beads. I even have my daughter's really tiny beads in here, which she doesn't want anymore, but I'm sure I'll find a good use for it. Then moving on to the other side, in the top drawer, is it's still quite empty. I've just got some basic tools and a lot of empty boxes for organizing. Then in the next drawer, I've got quite a lot of useful things. So on this side, I've got just paper and cardstock offcuts. They are all of the same size, so if I need a couple of them, I can just grab from here. Then I've got all my stickers sorted in this little box. Over here, I've got some finished tags, so I can just remove this container and take it to my desk, get what I need and put it right back. And I've got various little notepad pads over here, which I can tear from to to decorate my journals with. These are the smaller ones which I've seen a lot being used in bullet journaling. They've got some pretty pictures and they're quite useful in my tiny journals as well. And in the bottom drawer I keep all my stationery extras. So over here I've got glue sticks, double-sided tapes and random other bits and pieces and over here all my reinkers. Next to my cutting station and close to my big shot, I keep all my die cuts and embossing folders in this little box and it's easy to just transition it to use on the cutting station. 
Now let's take a look at the paints. So I keep all my metallic paints in this box all together and there's some extra tubes of other paints as well. Then I've got some acrylic paints, my paint brushes, my watercolors and on top I've got bigger bottles of acrylic paints and all my canvases at the very top. Let's look at this area which is where I do all my painting and computer work. I've got a big screen to plug into my laptop so I can see what's happening. I've got my Cricut over here, my laser printer, another printer down there which is an inkjet and also a scanner so I can just move it from there to my desk, do what I need to do and put it right back. Then I've got all my extra printer paper over here my Cricut tools and accessories and down there is two empty cubbies so there's room for growth. Over here are some finished book covers which I need to work on and over here I've just got some tech things like chargers and a keyboard and over there is a whole box of printer paper and at the top I've got just some gift bags and at the bottom more gift bags but the bottom is mainly what I use at my craft fair. Let's take a look at the shelves behind this desk. Down here I've got my Christmas box. Everything related to Christmas goes in there. Up here I've got all my ribbons, so they're sorted into two boxes. The top one has more of the larger rolls and the organza ribbons and the bottom one has the smaller and thinner rolls. Then I keep all my off-cut ribbons in this container. These are the longer ones which are still useful for many things. And the really small pieces I put in this jar. I can still use them for clusters or anything like that. And then I've got some really big rolls next to it. Here I've just got some magazines and adult coloring books, all my markers and pens are over here. Anything from Cricut pens, fiber tip pens and brush pens. Up here I've got some space and then these decorative boxes. I like my decorative boxes to be functional as well so I do store things in them. So in this one I've got all my hidden paper clips which I'm still working on. And this one has got all my wax seals and wax bits, so I can just grab the box if I want to work with wax seals. Up here I've got all my frames, so that would be anything that I casted from clay or any cut out frames. I put them all in here and I can just come and find whatever I need. These are just some of my tiny journals which I still need to complete. And up here I've got just a box full of photos. And then on the other side, that is just decorative, there's nothing in there. On the second shelf, I've got all these lined books and more lined papers in there. Over here, I've got my book page flowers, my travel journals, and then a box full of little notepads and finished cards. Down here, I've got some more functional decorative boxes. So this one has got all my finished tassels in. And in this one I keep my full packs of extra ribbon. Over here is where I keep my tiny treasures. Those are all my tiny journals. And down here in these containers, this one has all my lace. This box has more lace. These are basically offcuts from clothing. And then down here I've got a box full of wool. These are all my textured wools, so the eyelash trim and anything with any kind of bumps or texture on them. In here I keep all my string and elastic cords and in this box I keep all my embroidery floss, jute twine and anything like that. Now we're moving into the sewing area. In these drawers I just throw random things like fabric offcuts, these are plastic flowers and in the bottom drawer I've just got some empty jars and containers that I can use for storage.
in this tiny drawer I've got all my paper punches they fit perfectly and I can finally see what I have and use them over here I just keep my sewing machine pedals and then moving in behind the sewing desk I've got all my sewing related items here my patterns some tools this is a little thing that I made to keep my little scissors and fabric markers and things like that some more things in here my measuring tape all my scissors over here this is the sewing machine feet and these are my buttons and then just a little jar full of threads down here in these boxes I've got all my sewing threads embroidery threads more sewing machine feet so everything for my sewing machine I keep down there over here I've got all my bigger pieces of fabrics and some containers with little bits and pieces these boxes are empty so there's some space for growth as well then over here in the cupboard behind my sewing desk this side I've just got a bunch of empty boxes and another sewing machine and more containers down there with fabric with cuts and on this side I've got down there another sewing machine all my printer cartridges sewing machine extension table these are just old netting curtains and some more pretty fabrics in the drawers I've just got some fabric stabilizers uh, some more random bits and pieces and a bunch of little pieces of fabric then up there I've got a box full of old clothing that I want to upcycle uh, that container has got extra wool more clothing and on this side those are empty and those are just more things to upcycle over here I've got a lovely outside area it's the balcony that's why I have to keep this serve closed so the cat doesn't get out it's just a really nice quiet area where I like to sit, listen to the birds and do my creative thinking. Now we can take a look at the last section which is basically where I do my final works, my embellishing, my gluing, all those kind of things. And also most of the videoing of my final products. As you can see over here the arm that holds my phone for videoing. Over here I've got all my ink pads and my glues. I used to keep them on this side but I had to move them because the sun comes up on this side and in the morning it shines on my table and I don't think it's good for the ink or the glue. Then down here I've got a bunch of these clear drawers filled with random things. These are all my speciality ribbons. Then on this side I've got just circles and some words that I can use on a paper clip or anything like that. In this drawer I keep all my sequins so what's nice is these drawers can completely be removed so I can put them on my desk, search through them for what I want and just push them back in place. In here I keep all my labels that says handmade. I like to put them on my finished journals and these are just all my rub-ons and transfers. These two containers are still empty, but they're quite nice to use. They can completely come out from under there, so I still have to think what to put in them. On this side, I've just got some leather and plastic things to embellish with. Then in here, I've just got some ribbons and some butterflies and dragonflies, all fabric made. And then all my tiny flowers, these are a little bit bigger but these ones are quite tiny so these are from paper punches which I just stacked and just put a little something in the middle the 
this top drawer just has some paper scraps which I still have to sort out and then these two containers as my templates and and my muslin fabrics these are all coffee and color dyed moving on to the other side these tiny drawers are mostly empty but I do keep some bulldog clips in here I keep these pretty paper flowers in here because it's not just decorative I can just use some of them when I'm decorating one of my books over here I keep all my small scissors and other tools this is my pin board I like to pin letters photos and other things that inspire me on top here then here at the bottom is where I have my project list, the projects that I'm currently working on, and over here my ideas. Over here I keep all the things that I use regularly, like my pencils, my rulers, my markers, my bone folders. These are my book binding tools, my scissors. Then over here I've got this really cool rotating thing. This is where I keep my punches that I use most often like my corner rounder punches my half inch punch these are just old nail polish that I use to color paper clips or brads and then these are my tools this is a tool set uh, other tools tweezers this side I've got all my embossing powders here are just notebooks that I use to make important notes and then these are my pliers and tools for jewelry making then under the table is where I keep my glue gun and my heat gun and then in the drawers, the top drawer, I've got all my fancy edge scissors, a box full of wet wipes, my stapler, my hole punch and then just some more cutting tools and book binding tools in here. In this drawer I just basically throw everything that does not have a category yet like little off cut pieces of fabric and just random things that I think I can use. And on the other side at the very top is where I keep all my scrap papers. In the top drawer I've got all my tapes and some extra glue and in this drawer I've got just random things that I'm keeping. Um, these are old birthday cards other greeting cards and just things that I think I might find useful in a project. Then behind my desk I've got all of these cubbies. So let's start at the top. This is where I keep all my gift wrapping. These boxes over here is where I keep a lot of my scraps. So there's one for cardstock scraps, one for scrap strips, and one for just random paper scraps. Then over here are all my really big cardstock pieces and papers. Anything that doesn't fit anywhere. This box is filled with used tissue paper. Over here I've got my big roll of craft paper and another one. And then just some rolls of wallpapers. Over here I've got some coffee dyed paper that I still need to iron so these are all wrinkled and in this box I keep more things that I want to repurpose like pretty cake boxes that I've cut up or anything like that. These files are all just empty files which I still need to fill and then over here I keep my master boards the, those are the finished ones and then ones I just need final decoration on I put up here. Then in the next cubby this is where I keep all my foiled papers and I just file the things that I don't have a lot of in here like these are just plastic bits, some tracing paper off cuts, other things and these are papers that I've embossed and not yet used. In this compartment I've got all my textured papers on this side so that would be anything with any kind of texture on them and all my handmade papers as well and then I put any of those off cuts in this box then over this side I've got all my 12 by 12 scrapbook papers 
and over here is where I keep all my printables. So these box files are filled with printables that I've not yet used. I don't like to print them in advance, but there are some already printed. You might recognize this book from a previous video. This is how I store all my fussy cuts, my butterflies, my flowers, my labels, my tickets, all those tiny bits so I can easily see what I have and what I want to use. I've tried many storage ideas for this and this is the only thing that works for me. So I can just page through the book, look at what I've got, audition it on my piece. If it's not the right piece, I can just put it right back. So go check out that video if you want to know more. I did start a second one of these storage books because I needed a space for all my numbers, my postage stamps and my sentiments. Moving down to the next row, in this cubby is where I keep all my 6x6 six six paper pads and any other pretty tiny papers. This file over here basically just has alphabet stickers in, so all different shapes, colors and sizes of alphabet stickers. Then I keep more random papers in this folder and my newspaper back here. On to the next compartment. This is all my cardstock, different colors. Then over here, I've got on this side colored papers and then these are just lined papers which I've already torn from books and I can just grab from here if I need any lined paper in my journals. Here I've got all my stained papers, so that's anything from coffee dyed, food coloring dyed or watercolor paint dyed. So this is the colored cardstock and these are the papers. I categorized and separated them into something that makes sense to me, which would be the planes, the pattern, which is anything, any interesting pattern that the coffee made, and then stencil, and then at the very bottom I've got various different colors. Over here I've got all paper pads, bigger than 12 by 12, but not as big as the ones you saw on top, so they can still fit in the compartment and they are all just various colors. In this box I keep all kinds of plastics like transparency offcuts that I can use for specimen cards and then there's a bag full of baggies and this side any other kinds of plastic like book covers and anything of that sort. Over here I've just got all my envelopes then moving over here we're gonna look at these three compartments in one go because those are all my stamps so I've got wooden block stamps up there I've got more stamps in here the top drawer is just my inking tools and the next drawer has more like my date stamps number stamps alphabet stamps and then more wooden block stamps just random tools in the bottom drawer and then over here I've got my stencils and over here I've got all my clear silicone stamps and also just a little compartment with my stamp blocks and my ink blending brushes. Over here is where I keep my crocodile, my big bite and all my eyelids and then I've got my paper trimmer over here and my scoreboard on this side. In these little drawers I keep all my die cuts, also just some random sentiments. What's nice about these drawers is I can just remove them, put them on my desk, find what I want and put the drawer back. I've also got some 3D paper flowers in here. And here are the die cuts. This one's got flowers, these are feathers, and then butterflies. These containers have got more die cut leaves, faux wax seals, and all my pressed flowers. Then in here I've got pressed leaves to go with my pressed flowers. In here I've got all kinds of rhinestones and flat back pearls. And down here I've got all kinds of plain labels which I use to label my containers and some off-cut pieces of sticker paper which I use for the same purpose. Over here I've got more empty containers and on this side I've got all my clusters 
these are finished and ready to use and in this little container I've got more clusters but they still need some decorative elements. Then I've got this container over here for all my really tiny bits, punched out pieces of leaves and things like that. In here I've got random things, these are corners that I made from clay. Down here I've got some papers folded ready for signatures and some more random bits and pieces. Then this basket is filled with unfinished projects which I need to focus on. Over here I've got all my paper napkins, well that's not all of them. I keep the full packs in a box in another cupboard and then I just take some from that box and put them in here to use. Then over here I've got all my offcuts and scraps, so this is the box that I grab first before I take any of my new cardstock or papers. Um, I'll do a video on how I sort these at a later stage. Over here I've got all my extra glues, my art glitter glue, my spray glues, my almonds glue. And in here just some extra paints, paint brushes, rollers, extra tubes of paint and back there behind the box I've got all my spray paints. These containers have all fabric type embellishments so there's crocheted flowers, some iron-on pieces, empty container and then all my printed fabrics. It brings us to this last little compartment. This is where I keep all my magnets, all my washi tape, which is not a lot but I don't use them a lot and I do prefer to make my own from sticker paper off cuts and here's an example. All my bulldog clips, my ball pins and any other clips and then all my paper clips and my split pins or brads are in this bottom drawer. And lastly I want to show you the container my dog sleeps on. In here is where I keep all my cereal boxes and things that I want to use for journal covers. It's usually quite organized but lately I've just been smashing things in on top just because it's already so full and I really need to start using them. And that's my whole craft studio. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. If you have any questions on how I organize any specific item please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.